Rambam Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day, Kilaim chapter 2. Halakha 1. The following rules apply when seeds of one species are mixed together with seeds of another species. If the smaller quantity was one twenty-fourth or more of the entire mixture, for example, a se'ah of wheat became mixed with 23 se'ah of barley, it is forbidden to sow the mixture unless one reduces the amount of wheat or add to the amount of barley. If he sowed the mixture as is, he is liable for lashes. Halakha 2. Any species of seed that is considered a forbidden substance with the seeds that are mixed in is included in the sum of 1 24th. What is implied? 23 sour of wheat were mixed together with 2 cup in of barley, 2 cup of lentils and 2 cup of beans. He should not sow the entire mixture until he reduces the sour of mixed substances by removing part of it or adding to the wheat. For barley, lentils and beans are all considered as kilaim with wheat. Halakha 3. When does the above apply? When the different types of grain are mixed together. The different legumes are mixed together, or grain is mixed with legumes, or legumes mixed with grain. If, however, species of garden seeds are mixed with grain or beans, the measure which is considered significant is 1 24th of what would be sown of that species in the area necessary to sow a sa'ah of grain. If this amount is mixed with a sa'ah of grain or legumes, one should not sow this mixture unless he reduces the garden seeds or adds to the grain. Halakha 4. What is implied? For example, the must, uh, mustard seed was mixed with grain. Now, a cup of mustard seed is sown in the area fit for a sa'ah of grain. If 1 24th of a cup of mustard seed is mixed with a sa'ah of grain or legumes, one must reduce the mustard seed. Similarly, if it was customary to sow two sa'ah of a species of garden seeds in an area where a sa'ah of grain would, would ordinarily be sown, should a calf, sorry, should a half a cub be, be mixed in a sa'ah of grain or legumes, it must be reduced. Halakha 5. Therefore, the following laws apply. If grain becomes mixed with flaxseed, if there were three quarters of a cub in every sa'ah of grain, it is necessary to reduce the amount of flax. If there is less than, the, than that amount, it is not necessary to make such a reduction. The rationale is that in an area fit to sow a sa'ah of grain, it is customary to sow three sa'ah of flax seeds. This pattern is followed with regard to all other types of seed. Halakha 6. When does the above apply? When one did not intend to mix the two species and one did not intend to sow a mixture of the two species. If, however, one intended to mix one species of seed with another species or to sow two species, it is forbidden to sow even one kernel of wheat with an entire grain heap of barley. Similar laws apply in an, in all analogous situations. Halakha 7. The following, rules, the following rules apply when a person sowed a particular species in his field, but when the crops, crops grow. He saw that there are intermingled species there. If the intermingled species covered 1 24th of the area in the field, he should gather it until he reduces the amount because of the impression that might be created. An onlooker might think that perhaps he sowed mixed substances intentionally. This applies whether the intermingled species that grew was grain and legumes amid grain, and legumes or garden seeds amid grain, legumes and garden seed. If the amount that grew was less than this, he does not need to reduce it. Halakha 8. When does the above apply? When there is a reason to suspect that he did so intentionally. When, however, it is apparent from the situation that this was not the owner's intent, but the intermingled species grew on their own accord, we do not require him to reduce their amount. Halakha 9. What is implied? Indigo grew in a field of wheat. Grass grew in a field of chilba, planted for human consumption. It is obviously undesirable because the intermingled, intermingled species damage the primary species. Similar laws apply in all analogous situations. Halakha 10. How is it possible to know whether the chilba is planted for human consumption when it is sown in a series of rows and there is a border around it? Similarly, if different species grew in the place of the grain heap, we do not require him to uproot them, for it is known that he does not desire plants to grow in the place of the grain heap. If he removes some of the growths, which indicates that he desires to maintain the plants that remain, we tell him to uproot everything except one species. Halakha 11. We may not plant vegetables in a stump of a wild fig tree or the like. The following laws apply when a person buries a bundle of turnips, radishes or the like under a tree or even under a vine. 
If some of the leaves were revealed, he need not be concerned about the prohibition against Kilain, since he does not desire that the buried vegetables take root. If they were not tied in a bundle or their leaves were not revealed, he must show concern for that prohibition. Halakha 12. When a field has been sown and the produce that grew was harvested, but the roots were left in the earth, one should not sow another type of produce in that field until the roots are removed. This applies even if these roots will not produce a plant for several years. Halakha 13. When a person had sown wheat in his field and then changed his mind and decided to sow barley before the wheat grew, he must wait until the wheat seeds rot and decompose in the earth, i.e. three days if the field is well irrigated. Afterwards he should turn the land upside down with a plough and sow the other species. He does not have to turn the entire field upside down until there is not one kernel of wheat that has not, that has not been uprooted. Instead, he should plough the field like he would plough it before a rainfall, so that it would be watered thoroughly. Halacha 14. If the wheat grew, and then he changed his mind and decided to sow barley, he should turn over the field and then sow it. If he let his animal into the field and it, and it ate the growths, it is permitted to sow the other species. Halacha 15. On the first of Adara, a pronouncement is made regarding the need for concern for Kilain. Every person should go out to his garden in his field and clean it from mixed species. On the 15th of Adar, the agents of the courts go out and spread out throughout the land to check. Halakha 16. Originally, the agents of the court would uproot the mixed species and cast them out, and the owners of the fields would be happy that the court's agents would be cleaning their field. As a safeguard against indolence, the court ordained that they would declare ownerless any field where mixed species were found provided the additional species was one twenty fourth of the entire crop. If it is less than that, they should not touch it. Halakha 17. The agents of the court return during the intermediate days of Pesach to look at the, at the crop that were late in ripening. If mixed species have budded, we do not wait. Instead, the agents go out immediately and declare the entire field ownless if one twenty fourth of it is from a second species. The reason it's done in Adara, according to note 31 here, is this is the time when plants first begin to grow and it is able to see whether one's fields and orchards have mixed species growing in them or not.